Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, and welcome to another episode of Actors Daily Bread. If you were listening on the podcast, I want to welcome you there. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. You're going to want to stick around today because I have a very special guest so you can clearly see. Actress, voiceover artist, <laughs> dialect coach, sweet woman, beautiful redhead. Is it red or strawberry blonde? Like, what do, what do we call that? I get called both. Most of people <laughs> say redhead just because, but I like strawberry. I mean, <laughs> she's like, whatever. Anyway, you're going to get to know this is Karen Strassman. She and I did an episode of Bosch on Amazon Prime together, is how we met. And during our time on set, she said so many things that just, she was teaching me stuff and she was sparking my creativity. And so I was like, I have to get her on the show. So I want you to just stick around for that. If this is your first time watching, I want to welcome you to all my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up, replay watchers? Love you guys. <laughs> Love, love, love it. Again, I'm Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years, and I'm a life and career coach for actors just like you. And my goal is always to bring you people, information that will help you take your career to the next level. And something that has been coming up a lot with a lot of my students has been, you know, questions about dialects or when they have an audition that requires them to to speak in a different way. And sometimes I'm coaching my clients on the difference in their approach to character just by voice, you know, and how going deeper into their register will bring something up or higher and how that changes. And I thought there was not anyone better to bring on the show than Karen, because this is what she does. She's coached people. She does so many great things. So Karen, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad our, our schedule's finally linked up. Um, can you just tell my audience, you do so many things, so I know I didn't even talk about half of it, but just a little bit about you and your, some of your, your credits where people may know you from. Um, like, like Christine, I've been in the business quite a while, probably a little longer. <laughs> um, just a couple more years on the yeah, planet. Yeah, was fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I act on camera, theater, um, a lot of voiceover, a lot of iconic video games, cartoons, and yeah, I'm a coach. Um, yeah. I guess some credits, recent credits, um, people might have seen me in other than Bosch. Um, I played, I was a recurring role in Preacher recently. Oh, yes. Um, an evil, just so much fun. And I can tell a story about that later, which is really informative. Um, let's see, I can, um, ah, there's a TV series that I'm going to be on now that's a horror series, but I can't announce it yet. I should be able to announce it in the next couple of days okay. um, or in the next week or two. So if anybody ends up following me on Instagram or Twitter or something, go find out it's my name at Karen Strassman. There's apparently no other Karen Strassmans on the Great. planet. And I'll be sure that all your links will be below. Yeah. You can click. Um, so if you follow me, I'll be able to announce that soon, which is cool. Um, uh, God, so it's, there's so many, like, it's always hard to remember all my credits. I just, um, Resident Evil 2 just came out where I play one of the leads, um, Annette Birkin, and that was motion capture. So we spent a couple weeks in the studio doing motion capture, um, as I did for Wolfenstein 2, which was mo mo motion capture. Um, right. Wolfenstein 2, I played a French character. I did a French accent. Um... I do a lot of video games, Melina Katana and Mortal Kombat. Um, so we have some super, fan, some super yeah. fans out there freaking out like, oh my gosh, that's her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've recurred on Silicon Valley as a, a very uh, challenging lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, people might remember me from a few years back on Weeds where I played a recurring role as a uh, an SEC, SEC agent who was um, had a love affair with um, with one of the main characters. I'm gonna have to go back and watch. I used to love that show, I, and that's what I love about like being out here in LA now and meeting more people who I've I'm like. I've seen you. I, oh my gosh! That was I know. Cool. I know you're on set. You're like, oh, you're you're you're, and then you look on their IMDb and you're like, oh my god! I know. <laughs> I love it. I mean, and mm -hmm. you could go, of course, Karen can go on and on. And the same thing happens to me. I did an interview 
<laughs> earlier today. And she was like, what do people, you know, what are some of your popular shows? And I'm like, uh, let's pull up my MDB. Like, I don't remember. Like, <laughs> you sometimes, you, you know, when you're working, it's not to be funny. You just, you work so much. They're just not top of mind. You know, we're always on to the next thing or on a plane or jet setting. You do a lot of um, conventions and uh, especially with all the video games and stuff that you've been a part of. The conventions are great because when I go, all the fans know what I do. Oh, so good. Can say it, they can say it. <laughs> <laughs> they tell you know, right much, right. much, much more organized memories than I do. I love it. Um, you know, what I loved about working with you, you, you played um, my lawyer on Bosch. So if you didn't get to see it, that was last season five of Bosch. Um, and what I loved about working with you, we were talking one day at lunch, I think it was. And I don't even know how we got on the subject. It might have been someone in makeup was asking you a question about accents or speech. And, you know, Karen, I work with a lot of actors, a, lot, a chunk who are in the Southeast. And a note I'm having to give a lot of them often is the way their, their mouths are expressing certain words and how, where they get trapped almost. And so I, I think sometimes there's a negative connotation, let me know if you agree or not, with getting some kind of speech coaching or speech therapy. What are your thoughts on that? Because I, it's like, it's not a bad thing. It's just our mouths are doing something different. So um, it's not a bad thing at all. It's just some of us have regional regional accents or dialects yeah. which is great for that region but if you want to work in another region or another or as another you know accent or character sometimes if you just stay with a specific regional accent it can be limiting so it just doesn't give you as much access to as many of the roles as you might want to play thing that's limiting you you know whether it's you're from the South and you've got a little bit of a Southern thing, which means that there are certain roles where they need you to be a little bit more East Coast, you know, if they want you to be a, a fast talking lawyer and there's a little, a light little twang, then you probably won't be cast for that. They'll find somebody who has a different speech pattern. But if right. you want to be able to be cast for that, then that's easily something you can work on, you know? And I get people from all over the States, from all over the world, who really come to see me so that they have more opportunities. You know, if they want to lose their accent, um, you know, or learn a standard American, or if they look a certain ethnicity, but they don't do that accent, they want to learn that accent. Ah. So that they can play the ethnicity that they look like. You know, I have a friend who's from Iran. She's just so beautiful. And in a, in a flip of a switch, she can physically look Indian. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just put a little bindi on her or put a, yeah. and she was completely Indian. And so we've been working on her Indian accent so that that just opens up that casting on that, you know? And it's just like, there's, there should never, ever be any shame or bad feelings about you know how one speaks because it's just let me explain so when we're babies um we play we you know we discover we have a belly button and we play with that we discover we have fingers and we play with them we discover we have toes we play with them we discover we have a mouth and it makes sounds and we play with it we go and what we do is we're just hitting all these different weird muscles and making sounds and it's very enjoyable we learn how to speak, you know, or we learn how to hear speech, perceive speech, then we start learning how to talk. And what happens is, and I, I haven't studied exactly how this happens, so to me it's a miracle. Okay. But by miracle, we hear how our parents speak to us, and not only do we reproduce the exact same sounds, but we use the same muscles in our vocal instrument as they do, which means that um, as a British person, um, a baby might, if a mother says, mommy, mommy, I'm your mommy, you know, mm -hmm. then the baby's going to say, mommy, mommy. Right. And if, as an American child, the American mom is going to go, mommy, mommy, the baby's going to go, mommy. And they're going to put their vowels nice and open in the jaw. And they're going to hang on to the vowels because Americans hang on to their vowels. Mm -hmm. In France, the woman will, the mother will say, maman, 
mama. And the baby won't go, mama. The baby will go, mama, mama. Because the French people, they speak in the front of the mouth and they use the consonants. So what happens is, as you develop as a child and you learn how to speak a certain language with a certain dialect, what happens is you start favoring all those muscles that your parents use to speak the language. And what happens is at the same time is all those other muscles that you were playing around with as a baby, they're kind of just put on the back burner and you don't use them anymore. So what happens, and that's what creates accents and speech patterns and things like that. So what happens is you grow up in a certain um, accent or dialect, you literally grow up in a certain way of using your vocal instrument. And so you don't, it's great. You don't have to think when you talk, like you don't have to think when I say something right. and how to say it. Um, so what happens is all those reflexes are working for you, but if you want to learn another dialect or just slightly change some sounds that aren't working or, you know, then it's not just changing the sounds, but sometimes there are certain muscles that are working that don't work in the other dialect you want to lean towards. So in learning what I often work on with people in learning another dialect or accent is how to actually use the instrument of that dialect. So I was talking to a new client the other day, and I'm like, you actually want to learn to use, play a st your standard American instrument instead of you've been playing your language with your British instrument. When the muscles are different muscles, the British use the muscles on the roof of the mouth and they don't drop their jaw. Whereas Americans, um, those in the, just the podcast won't be able to hear as much, see as much. But those who are visually watching this, you can see that as an American, my jaw is flapping down like a Muppet. Right. And um, so Americans, our voices are placed really from the um, lower jaw down and in our chest. Um, whereas British, really, everything's placed on the roof of the mouth. This is so great. I'm so excited <laughs> now right now. <laughs> Yo, so, this is how I felt at lunch. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> because it, it almost makes me think of it, I'm going to dancer terms, of mm -hmm. like a choreography of sorts. Like we, this is the movement we need to take to get this end result. Yes. So it's like, it, yes. That's what, that's what, so my what, what I'll tell people. It's, it's like, um, so say one accent is like, say a, a dancer has been brought up as a classical ballet dancer and they get hired to do hip hop, but all their muscles are trained to hold their body a different way and to use their muscles for hip hop, they literally have to use a different dancing language and allow different muscles to work. Right. And it's very much the same thing with the dialect or accents. So people, so people from the south, um, there's there's a there's a, just a different. For example, mostly in the south, the language is going back, mm -hmm. it's kind of going back and dripping in the back of the throat. Mm -hmm. Whereas you more you get on the east coast, and even east coast is really m moving more forward sort of standard American just sits right here in your chest and just kind of hangs out. But, you know, the more you get into the South, it kind of sits in a pocket right there and just kind of drips back almost on the roof of the mouth mm -hmm. because it's almost closer to British in some ways, the way it's placed. And that's why British people have an easier time doing a Southern accent. Interesting. That's why they get in those roles. Uh-huh. Karen, you just let us, you just let the, the, the secret out. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get, how did you get started with diet? Like, how did you know, like, I'm good at this. Like, how did, we all have natural talents. Yeah. How did that come about? When did you notice it? Um, well, I start, I, I mean, I became a professional dialect coach at the age of 20, but wow. what, led, what, what led up to that was, um, I, I think there was a couple factors. One is that my mother was Danish. So I grew up, I grew up with the, influence of another language and another um, accent. And I didn't really, you know, when you have a parent who has an accent often, you don't really hear it, you're not conscious of it. Right. Um, but then, and I, she didn't even teach me Danish because she didn't think it would be useful um, living in America, which was a generational thing. Yeah. But I learned as much as I could when we go back and forth, back home to Denmark to visit relatives. And I just really enjoyed it and I just wanted to speak it well. So I started learning the accent and then I would imitate um, my cousins with their Danish accent. Um, so 
um, Neue Tendenz, uh, the Danish accent is a little bit in the back of the throat. And um, when they talk Danish, they say this a little bit like they have potato in their throat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so that, that, that interest was fun for me. And then I, I was just interested in, in being an actor. It was my dream to be an actor, at, like ever since I can remember. I mean, three, four, I was fascinated by it. And I would do plays at school and I would audition and get roles with accents. Um, and I just enjoyed doing that. Um, Irish accent, British accent, all that kind of stuff. So then um, when I was a student, I moved to France and I learned to speak I started learning to speak French and I went to a French theater school just because why make things like, why not make things more difficult? Right. <laughs> Go all in. <laughs> why? why? Um, and at that time, the, at one of the theater schools I was at, there was a notice on a bulletin board and um, studio, a professional studio that was well known all over France for the, the work they do with actors who specialized in coaching French actors to act in English for the camera, because there were a lot of co-productions floating into France at that time. Um, you know, Canadian co-productions, French co-productions, and they would come to, you know, Paris, all different regions, and they would want to hire French people who either spoke English well, or who spoke well enough so that you could understand them, you know, and their accent was not so thick. Um, and uh, they were looking for an apprentice, an American actor that was an would be an apprentice for a year. And I went and I got the job and I apprenticed there as a dialect coach with them for a year. And I was just, I was just good at it. I don't know why I was just good at it. And they, after that, they hired me for a uh, full time and I became one of their main full time dialect coaches. So I would be on set, you know, coaching there. I would coach at the studio and then I would be invited to homes of famous French actors to prepare them for their important roles. And, you know, I was just 20, 21 years I old. I was just living the life. Yeah, yeah. How did, did you find it, um, it's, I was, I'm always, always curious about this, like a makeup artist who does her own makeup, puts her own lashes on, right? How does that change when it's, you have to verbalize that to someone else? Like you played around with different accents and dialects, but how did you find the transition to telling someone what was in your brain easy or difficult? Well, um, the advantage I have in doing that is that I'm not a crazy accent genius. Now I know people who are insanely good at accents. Like they can go to, they can travel to England and reproduce in every city the exact accent. Like I have a friend who's a wonderful voiceover artist. His name is Dave Mitchell, and he can do every single accent all over the world. But he can't teach it because he doesn't know how he does it. Ah, that's yeah, that's what I was trying yeah. to. And I have, and I have a whole, I know a whole bunch of people who are just insanely talented, but they don't know how they do it. They just pick it up and spit it out and they can't teach. The advantage I have is I'm not as brilliant as them. Mm. So when I hear an accent, I literally have to go, huh, what part of my mouth is that placed in? Huh, what are they using more of a consonant? Huh, where do I feel it? And my process to learning any accent is extremely conscious. Okay. So again, it's not like, it's not like, oh, I hear it. And I just like, it's a crazy thing. I can just do it. I really have to think about it and study it and figure it out and work on it and practice it. So because I have such a, you know, conscious way of learning them, it's really, really easy for me to teach them because I, as I'm learning it, I'm working out, oh, you know, how do they do that? Oh, oh, it's more on the roof of the mouth like that. Oh, oh, it's a flat thing. The British have a flat thing on the roof of that. And I'm constantly like figuring it out. And then it's so easy for me to, to show other people how to do it. That's so, so, you know, yeah, it's, so it's an, an advantage as, in being a coach that I'm not like as insanely brilliant at it as some right. people are. <laughs> Cause it makes me think, so that means even if it's an accent, well, before I ask that question, what's the difference between an accent and a dialect? So if we're an actor and we get a breakdown and it says must have such and such dialect or accent, is there a different way of approaching that? Or just a different well, way? it's just semantics. Really. Okay. I mean, we could go in the dictionary and find definitions. I mean, basically, an accent is basically an accent from a certain country. So, you know, um, an Indian accent, a French accent, 
um, uh, I don't know, uh, an Arabic accent, right, from a different country. And then dialects are different accents within a language. Mm. So, you know, a specific dialect, you know, that comes from the swamps of Louisiana, you know, a specific dialect, dialect in Louisville that is very different from other dialects in other places in Kentucky. Yes. You know, so that's generally that's how people kind of that's use those things. But, you yeah. know, I mean, I don't, people say accent or dialect to me and I know what, we both know what we're talking about. And, right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, <laughs> something that's happened to me and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, being in Hollywood, like I've, I've, I've done voiceovers and I've done some characters that have required a South African accent or some type mm -hmm. of African accent, right? Mm -hmm. And there have been times I have hired, because just like you just explained, South African is going to sound different than Nigerian, it's going to sound different than, you know, so there have been times I've went all the way in. I got, uh, you know, a friend of a friend who's Nigerian to work with me and, and get it and get their rhythm and all that. And then I go to the audition and they're like, can't understand you. Like, and so I had to learn sometimes the project doesn't want the full shebang. They want this Hollywood washed version. And I remember being the last time it happened, I was like, I invested like weeks, like getting, and I was so proud. And I, and I got approval from this Nigerian woman's like, yes. And I went and I didn't book it. And I, and I remember during the audition, it was, it was this white guy, you know, one of the producers like, oh, I can't understand you. Like you said, this is a Nigerian woman. You wanted this. So can you talk a little about how do we as actors find that line of what's too much and how do we make that choice? Well, I'd say it's mostly about George and Martha in Idaho. <laughs> uh, honey, I can't understand. <laughs> what did they say, George? <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> that makes it very clear. <laughs> <laughs> because you know sometimes you see and i know some of you watching and listening know what i'm talking about look my family you know my mom we got jamaican and bermuda like that's not a thing and so we do jamaican jamaican? Not, yeah oh will you do jamaican yeah um well you know we sit here with the facebook ads and i gotta pick up my phone and i have this here you know and so sometimes oh i just I don't know if you can see my goosebumps <laughs> my whole body heated up and i have goosebumps i love Oh, then, I love that then, accent so much. But then listen, so I'll get an audition and I'll just talk like I've heard, you know, aunties, cousins, people talk. And then I don't book it. And then I look at the show and it'll be this stereotypical, yeah, man. Oh, oh, come over here. And, like, <laughs> and I know that's how a lot of Africans feel about the different dialects like because i have a lot of south african friends and they're like oh gosh this is horrible so there's always that worry too i don't you don't want to offend you want to represent well and i think what the outside world who's not in the industry don't know is that george and martha in idaho like we have to sometimes adjust so i just it's just very interesting and i'm so glad you 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 mentioned that because it's just it can be a bit confusing of how much to, how far to go. Yeah. And, and I think generally when an accent is, you know, involved, what they do want for movies and television is they want, they want a version that's not too thick so that George and Martha can understand. Um, and I think you have more of a, a range when you're talking about cartoons Okay. Because then you can do the Pepe Le Pew and it is a very French accent and it becomes very funny. Yeah. Um, and, but I, right now also video games I'm finding is the same thing. Like whenever I get a breakdown for a video game with an accent, you know, they want, they're always asking for a slight this or slight that. So what they're basically looking for is to feel that the person came from that place, but that they've probably been living you know, in an Anglophone country for a little while so that they've kind of like, 
like a lot of people do who've lived in an Anglophone country who have an accent, it kind of gets watered down a little bit. So, you know, for TV, they want to feel that that person, you know, so, you know, they want to feel that the Arab, the, you know, the Arab enemy, you know, in, um, um, uh, what's that show? Um, uh, like 24 or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, is you want to feel that they're, you want to have a sense that they're the stereotype of that and know that they come from there and hear their accent. But George and Martha have to understand that. And I, that is my biggest <laughs> takeaway. Now I'm watching and listening. Take that. And you have given me such a, aha. Uh -huh. and, and you also, you also don't want to offend anybody like you're saying by doing too, doing too thick because then you make them, then you make them stupid, you know? Right. So it's, but it's, but then again, you go to the Jamaican when you were doing something that's just more, you know, real more. And then they went with the stereotype of Jamaican. So occasionally there will be a, a time when they'll go with a stereotype of something just because it's so pleasing to the ear and so recognizable to George and Martha. Right. Oh, George, she's from Jamaica. Right. <laughs> and possibly I would assume because the, the show, I'm, I won't say the show, but it was a yeah. multi camp. Uh, okay, there you go. So then they do, yeah, comedy, they'll want, comedy, they will want more of a stereotype. So, yeah, so for example, um, I was just working with an actress this morning in New York who, over Skype, who was auditioning for um, a show in New York. She needed a French accent. And we've worked on comedy together, and she came to me with this, and, but it wasn't double spaced. It was, it was a, you know, serious show, theatrical. And um, so she went at it with more of a like this and that. And I said, now that accent is great. And I, there would be nothing to fix because it sounds great. It sounds really French if you were doing three camp. And they, they would want that for this character. Right. But because it's, you know, it's a theatrical show, it's serious, it's drama, you know, we really need to temper it back. And even in the breakdowns, it said she's from France, you know, blah, 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 slight French accent, light French accent. So what we had to do, um, she was talking with a French accent, but we had to take away all the R's. So instead of saying, um, for example, um, I'm, very hap I'm very happy to come to the party to meet uh, Renata. Um, those weren't her lines, I'm just making them up yes. for NDA. Um, so we made it, I'm very happy to come to the party to meet Renata. And suddenly you have a, very, a character who is unquestionably French, but you can understand everything they say. Uh, there's a certain um, intelligence, uh, competence that's not comedy at all, but she's very perfectly French, you know? Gotcha. And all we did was back off on those R's in the Olivier said, you know, which is, it's the same thing with the German accent. Um, uh, for a uh, German accent, you can go very, very heavy with a German accent and it becomes much, uh, much more uh, German. Or you can take a German accent and be uh, understandably from Germany, but it's not, uh, you're not pushing the accent, it's just there. Yes, and it, it, it's still effective. As I yeah. hear you transition, it's still and effective. And it's, it's, in a way, it's more believable because then what happened when, because well, I was seeing her face on Skype and she was working and all of a sudden she wasn't an actress doing a French accent anymore. All of a sudden she just became that person. Was it? Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what you want to look for when you're working with any accent. You don't want to feel like you're doing an accent or putting on an accent or you're an actor doing. You really want to, like, again, drop into that that accents instrument. So you're just talking from that instrument. And so that there's kind of a marriage between, you know, the parts of you that can lean into that, those muscles and that part of you and express yourself in those ways. Um, instead of, I have to do a, you know, I have to do a German accent for this role. It's like, no, I'm, I'm actually acting. I'm, you know. I'm Right, I'm I'm German. I'm I'm acting, doing the scene. Yeah, I'm coming. I from love Germany. that. I, before we wrap, I do have a question. Mm. So good, guys. You're gonna just have to rewind this and watch it all over again and listen all over again. This is so so good. And don't worry, you're gonna find out how to contact Karen. Okay, I already know you asked. <laughs> um, how do you, as a coach, deal? Because you okay, you do a lot of accents, but you don't know every accent in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I come and I have this accent that you've never tried before. Do you then? Do you a not take the client, or do you b 
need time to dissect it, hear those rhythms, hear where it's placed? And are you still able to coach someone with an accent that you have not perfected? Mm -hmm. um, great question. Um, it depends on the case. Okay. Um, for example, I, I know so many, like I, you know, I have a network of other coaches and if there's somebody who I know just rocks at that thing and then I'm just like, Oh my God, send them to JB. Yeah. Um, like, you know, heartbeat. On the other hand, you know, there's some that I know that I'm familiar with that I, you know, haven't been doing every day and I know that I can brush up on it and I know I can get my client to where they need to be and that they'll sound great. So it just, it depends on the accent and, um, well, yeah, it just depends on the accent, where it's from, how I feel about it. Um, but I, I'll, my personal desire is always, always, always to give the client the best. So whatever, you know, the circumstance yeah. um, demands, you know. I would, yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. And I, and I have accents that I'm, you know, that I'm still learning and working on. And I do exchanges with coaches like oh. I, I have some friends who are brilliant coaches for certain accents, but they they've come to me and they're like, Karen, can you help me with this one? I'm like, yeah, let's do an exchange. You help me with that one. Um, and, um, so, and you know, and there's some that like, I love, um, South African, mm -hmm. but whenever I have to do South African, you know, I always go to JB Blank okay. um, because, JB Blank, okay. because okay. he okay. is just, he does. I mean, he coached, all of Ethel Fulgart's plays here at the Fountain Theater, and he just knows South African, you know, inside and out. He knows the heart and soul of it. And, you know, that's something that I don't, there's certain accents that I, if I have an audition, I will prepare it and I won't, I won't just kind of wing it and flop around in it. There's lots of accents that I don't even have to mark the page. I just go in and do it. But there's a lot that I'm still marking my page because I want to really make sure to be true. And here's one more thing. On my Instagram, I had a post uh, last week, I think, where I talked about this. Ooh. I had to do, I had to do um, an accent. Um, I had to do Swedish. And I do the Swedish accent and I speak Danish and I do a Danish accent, but I also had to do a couple sentences in Swedish. And none of my Swedish friends were around to contact them <laughs> to get them to say these frigging words to me. And I was like, you know, and, and you can't like punch that into Google and have, you know, you just can't, you have to have a real person do it. So I called up the Swedish um, Chamber of Commerce and, <laughs> I love and I got this, I got this sweet 20, 25 year old on the phone named Simon, um, Swedish Simon. And I said, you know, this is a strange request, but I'm an actor and I'm preparing an audition. I have to say some sentences in Swedish. Could I offer to send you some money on Venmo or something? Could, could I ask you to, if I give you my email to record these sentences for me, if I send them to you? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I can do that. You know, and so he recorded them for me. And I said, you know, while you're at it, can you just record my, my other lines in English so I can hear your Swedish accent and hear how you're saying it? So, you know, I sent him I 25 bucks on Venmo and he very diligently recorded them all for me. It's like and side hustle. <laughs> but, it's like, but it is, it's like, I think as an actor, you have to learn to sort of go outside of your comfort zones. And I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassed to call. But what, you know, it's a, um, and there's, and you know, even in doing research for a character, it's really good to know that those kind of things exist. So that was fun. I love that. That's a gangster move. I actually <laughs> filing that in the file cabinet too. <laughs> like I'm not going to not do this audition. I just need this clarity. Yeah. Um, one final question before um, we wrap and thank you. This is all just wonderful. And I can't wait to start working with you. I feel like just for fun, I want to work on like a Brit British accent, like just for fun. Oh yeah. You should do that. Um, so that's sidebar, my sidebar goals. Um, <laughs> how much time you know i we've all been put in a crunch audition comes in like oh my gosh i'm gonna do the best i can but with with that not being the case with like just how i just said you know i think intentionally you know because i speak spanish i'm not fluent but i do speak spanish and but i'm like just to work a muscle as an actor like this is the fun stuff i don't want to it doesn't have to be that i'm under pressure and have to do it i just want to practice how much time do you think someone should invest 
especially starting out with learning sounds and placement, um, that's a real, I guess, a realistic time frame to get something in your body and in your in your face. <laughs> um, that's that's a hard question to answer. Like I can't give you a straight answer because it depends on if you've been doing other accents, if you speak other languages, mm -hmm. and you're gonna learn a lot faster because you're used, if you speak another language or a couple other languages, that'll, you are already in the habit of switching some placements and doing, uh -huh. so that'll help. If you already do some accents, already studied them in like acting school or whatever, then you'll be at an advantage. Um, if you're a musician or if you're a singer, you'll be at an advantage because you've worked with your instrument before. Okay. Um, if you've never done anything, then it's gonna take a little longer. Because it's just, it's, Your body's it's like, what, what, is, what is this? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. I mean, so it's, it, I mean, I, um, last, a couple of weeks ago, I worked with um, a British rock singer um, named Kieran Strange, who is just incredibly talented as a singer and as a just a wonderful human being. And she got to audition. Um, he got to audition. Um, he's, he's, um, identifies as a he okay. and he got to audition for this big anime series with a character that is um transgender or, i use these words wrong and i'm embarrassed um, who identifies as a he is and so he really wanted to book this role but he was british and he had to do american and he had a few days to perfect an american accent and do a cartoon boy voice wow and I was thinking, God, I don't know if we can do this. Like, and he did it and he booked that damn role. Yes. And he like in, in four sessions, eh, they were kind of two hour sessions, but four, well, you, know, you know, but like in, that was it. And now he has his American accent. We, we, um, we'll brush it up from time to time. There's a couple of sounds that need a little brushing up, but you know, but then I have other British actors who I've been working with for months who are trying to get their standard and are still kind of slowly working along with it. Um, you know, I, I will have somebody come in and prep an accent. Uh, I had somebody who needed a French accent for a video game last week. And she's, but she's a very talented actress. She's a Shakespearean actress. She's, you know, spent years doing Shakespeare. She directs um, video games and anime herself. And, um, but she said, you know, I don't know how to do French. I've never done it. And she got it in 45 minutes. I love it. And she booked the role. I, you know, I think it's just one of those things that comes down to just life. Like yeah. And then some people need, like, they want to work with me on French or Russian. And, you know, we need like five sessions or, um, I think what I can say is that getting an accent that like, say, learning perfecting an accent like if you're an american perfecting a british accent is going to take more time because it's much more specific whereas if you're american and you're learning french russian anything that is another language that means the accents vary so the russian accent there isn't a cookie cutter way of how a russian accent is however if you're doing irish or british or australian you know you you know people from those countries, whereas, whereas there's so many different accents for an Italian. They can have a light accent. They, they, some, you know, say the TH, some don't say the TH. So it's a lot easier often to learn an accent from a country that speaks another language. Does that make sense? It absolutely does yeah. because um, it's just, it's all, it's all different. <laughs> Everything is new. Um, and it's almost how I can see how, like I speak Spanish and I've started to learn a little of Italian. They're so similar that sometimes it helps, but then it can also hurt because I'm yeah. using this word this way and they're so similar. So I absolutely love that. I'm just curious because I know people always think, well, how much time will it take? And I love the answer of it depends. And it depends on you and it depends on your experience and it depends on also your drive and how much you practice and rehearse yeah. i would imagine like anything else there's no nothing's cookie cutter overnight like you can karen can give you the tools but you still have to do your own work and if you're in a pinch and you have an audition due in a week guess what you're gonna do the best you can in a week um i love this karen this has been 
I'm so glad we finally got to have this, this meeting, this talk, because again, as a singer, yeah. And as someone who already does other other languages and accents, I was so intrigued to just hear about placement because I'm always thinking about melody and choreography and how this how do I make this flow for me? And I would imagine if I had a process, if I knew, oh no, we're placing this, I'm just yeah. placing it. That's all that, it is. That I can rinse that and repeat that. That's all it is. That's all it is. And so that's so helpful. How and I know people are like, Christine, if you don't tell us how to get in touch with this lady. Oh. How can people find you? I'm going to put whatever you say in links, but just for the sake of the recording, how can people connect with you and, and to inquire about working with you? Um, my website is www.karenstrassman.com. Can you spell Strassman for us? Yeah, S-T-R-A-S-S-M-A-N. So, so there's no U and there's two S's. Karen yeah. Strassman. Karen spelled yeah, in the normal way with an E. Gotcha. Um, and so, and yeah, you can email me from there. I'll get your email. And um, also I do a weekly uh, accent and dialect tip on Instagram right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, people are really you know. enjoying it. So my Instagram is just at Karen Strassman. Okay, so Karen Strassman everywhere. And um, yeah, Twitter is at Karen Strassman. Um, uh, yeah. So Good. You, got, you got your names early. Yeah. My yeah. Name yeah. Is different because it's, like, it's, not like a, it's not like an exotic name, but for some reason there's nobody else on the planet who's using it. <laughs> I love it. Guys, this has been, I mean, just, I know I'm, it was well worth the wait. Oh, reach out to Karen. Don't waste her time. You know what I mean? Reach out when you're, when you're serious and if nothing, if you're not ready to invest, at least follow her on Instagram, follow her anyway, so you can get these weekly tips. But, um, think about some of you specifically, I'm not going to say names, but some of you who've been working with me, I've been saying just get, you know, because some of you have really thick Southern accents or some of you are trying not to sound so wherever your region is. Like, I think as always that thing as actors, we try to be, there's this blank slate that is kind of needed, you know, for years, you know, when I was, when I first moved from New York to Georgia, you're like, oh, you're from New York, I, you know, and so I worked for a long time to neutralize that, you know, and just, so, and I know, and when I'm in Atlanta, I can turn it on when I have it, auditions from the Southeast, I know how to rack, rack it up a little bit, you know, so learning how to, to turn it on, turn it off is so key. And what, like Karen said earlier, would just give you that flexibility so you don't have to be limited, especially if that's not your desire. So Karen, thank you so, 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 so much. This was so wonderful. I, I, I just want to add um, to everybody listening, you guys, whatever destiny brought you to Christine, it was a good one. This woman, I mean, and you guys know this because you're hanging in there with her and listening to her, but she has the most uplifting energy. It's like, lady, you exist on a frequency whenever, like, cause I listen to your stuff too. I just, you know, you have it on social media. So I'll just listen yeah. to it if I'm driving and you, you really exist in just this beautiful frequency. And whenever I hear you, whenever we have a contact, you just, it's not like you're trying to be positive. It's like <laughs> whenever you hear a song and you resonate with that song, you yeah. just resonate in such a beautiful place. I mean, you just, I don't know if you got angels like, you know, sitting on your shoulder, flapping their wings, but you just have the most beautiful resonance. And, and as we say in French, joie de vivre. And just, you just have this generous, life-filled spirit, like, like a juicy, you know? <laughs> it's just, you're so juicy and ah, and it's just, um, you know, and a lot of people follow you and they love you for that. But I just, I just want to say, you know, that this, this is rare people. Like there are a lot of wonderful people out there, but Christine Horn is a, a rare angel, juicy lady, you know, and, um, and it's such a pleasure to, to know you. Thank you. Same here. That's mm -hmm. like, that's why we, we, we connected to each other on set. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, myself a booking I, was like, I was like, I hear how you're talking. I like you. <laughs> you know, we're all magnets. That's what I tell people all the time. You know, you know, it's like attracts like. So I thank you for that. And mm -hmm. I'm, um, honestly, I just, 
I am just grateful for my assignment and to live in them and to just do what feels good. And this feels so good to me. And I'm glad you feel that because that Mm -hmm. is just what's coming out of me. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you miss any part of this, just hit the replay, watch it again, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of this episode. Subscribe. If you're listening on on the podcast, please subscribe and rate. If you're listening on, uh, watching on Facebook or YouTube, subscribe, turn on your notifications so you never miss this good stuff. And more importantly, again, follow Karen Strassman. I mean, just, I'm excited to work with, with you in this next uh, piece of the year. Um, again, just for fun. We don't all have to wait till it's, you know, do or die time. <laughs> so <laughs> You know, so thank you so much, Karen. Have a great rest of the day. And I can't wait to see you on the next TV show or hear your voice on on something. Bye. Bye, everybody.